All right, as you can see in time lapse, what a morning. Holy crap. Sometimes I feel like these jobs that are broke down to nothing just about, and that you got a back tape, are more than, you know, just like an all over that still has all the glass in it. Whew, that is literally uh, probably two hours of taping. I know there's always going to be that one guy on here that says that I'm slow, that he can do it faster, that they've been doing it for a hundred years. Well, I'm the boss. It's my shop. I do it my way on my time. Here we are. So we back taped everything. Of course, you get urethane around your windshield. So I face I back taped, then I face taped to keep it off of the paint off the urethane part that way we don't have to clean it because it don't have to be pretty there your paint only actually has to go to like here it won't get seen nothing past that so all that don't matter um on a race car you want to make sure you get all these back taped nothing on the face because sometimes they don't run seals i think randy is going to put seals back in these but you don't want it all the windows are back taped nothing on the face even though you won't see none of this that's a complete waste of time to even paint it i thought about taping it off but we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it um back window same ordeal uh back taped and then face taped it you know paint will only get seen right there to the primer so all that doesn't matter um, but you don't want to put paint where the urethane goes and then the urethane sticks to your paint your paint didn't stick to the old stuff and then it comes unglued so we just want to leave that all raw and dirty with old urethane so that the new urethane will stick a lot right down to it all inside your trunk lid gets painted so you back tape all that and then the center of the tail around the license plate we want to stay black uh, you won't see none of this it'll all be behind it so i actually just come right here and then came down and i'm just going to paint all this and then if we want to trim it back out with black paint we can even though it don't really matter but that way any if there's a gap or something you know you make sure that you got red paint everywhere that's the only reason why i did it like that so it's all back taped under the car all the way down to the ground uh, I did try to back tape it to the pinch weld. There's too much grease, grime, and rubber under there. So I face taped it to the pinch weld so the pinch weld will actually be black, but it'll blend right in and look perfectly fine. That's a little trick on down there is you don't have to necessarily back tape that. If it's already black or something, you can face tape. All of the wheel wells are back taped. <sighs> all these doors are back taped. You gotta make sure you get all your holes. Every single bolt hole, roll up your tape in the shape of like a cone put it in there squish it that way you don't get paint inside your threads i do have to hit that brake line i'm not worried about getting it on the line just want to make sure it's off the threads um we taped all that up uh taped from the inside of the car all of the little tiny holes everywhere um that way no paint blows through inside the car besides that i've papered up the transmission and then wrapped plastic all the way around it so i think we're good to go let's get this thing wiped down and get going we're gonna do this thing we're not gonna talk through this whole video this is not a how-to video on how to paint I try to help y'all in my smaller videos we're gonna roll straight through this thing on time-lapse so here's what we're gonna do uh, bulldog we're gonna bulldog all of the areas which comes out clear um, any edges anything I'm not chancing it I'm bulldogging every freaking thing I don't care what anybody says I'm hitting it with adhesion promoter to double uh, to double ensure my work uh, you know to make sure that it helps it here we're rolling straight in the We're going to lay as many coats of Vapsil as I need to lay in order for this thing to get rid of the black and the gray look the same. Um, I mean, I'm going to rock and roll through this. I'm not going to pause and keep talking. Once we get done with the Vapsil, we are going to lay the base coat. The base coat is probably going to get two to three coats, depending on how it looks. Um, once we get through the base coat, we're rock and rolling in the high solids clear. I'm probably not stopping talking between this. So pay attention and understand, Bulldog, sealer, base coat, clear coat. Let's get it. What I want you to do right now is comment down below what color you think we're about to shoot on this car. You're going to see it as soon as it comes out paint gun. I want to know what color you think uh, this car is going to end up being. Comment below.
All right, so that's the sealer laid down in there. So what color did Randy pick? Remember, your sealer always is not the same color as what you're actually spraying. Sometimes you drop a sealer so you can have a coat underneath it. So what did Randy pick? This is what Randy picked. You ready? It's also red. <laughs> but that is true. Sometimes your sealer is not the same color as what you're actually painting. So this is the color of Randy's car. This is actually the factory color off of uh, his wife's Ford Mustang. So his Mustang and his wife's Mustang will be matching the exact same color code. So we're going to just mix this base coat up. We're going to get it in the gun and we're going to go shoot it. I'm not going to time lapse none of this because you're just not going to be able to tell a huge difference. The people that mix my VAP seal actually do an amazing job at mixing um, the same shade. Uh, they do really, really good job at that. So a lot of my work's already done for me. We can actually walk in here. Let's grab the VAP seal and we'll put it side by side. Um, I use NCS in Wilmington and forgot, already closed it up. So we'll compare their sealer to what the actual paint is. Um, I mean, they're just amazing. Gene and Caleb over there are really good with this kind of stuff. Um, so, I mean, there's the, there's the colors. So they're, uh, they're amazing. So you can see this is the bat seal color. Uh, it's just when it's down in the can, it looks darker. So there it is. I mean, look at that. Mr. Gene and Caleb, whoever makes this, because I know Brian uh, is pretty cool. Miss Connie's nice, but Gene and Caleb are amazing with mixing shades and stuff like that. And I know they're the only two that normally make bat seal. So shout out to them because they always get me right. Bat seal is like $15 a quart. Whereas, I don't even know what we paid for a half a gallon of that. We did go with the cheaper base coat to save money because there was no reason to, um, there's no reason to put expensive base coat down. Um, I know a lot of people are going to hound me about that and say I'm wrong, but your UV protection comes from your clear, not your base. Um, if you are trying to match a panel, um, you're not painting all over, then you do need to put the nicer base coat down because of color variances. So you want to use a nicer base that actually matches better. But when you're doing it all over, just go straight for the cheapest color. Uh, this is the Omni. And then we know that it was just cheap. We'll cut this label off when we're done. And if we ever need to do any touch-ups or whatever, it's going to be a lot better on the wallet. Um, you know, and he put the big money in the, the clear that he's shooting. So all the clear is in here. Uh, this reducer. And glamour clear. So this is what clear is going on this. So Randy put the money in the clear where it actually matters and not uh, in the base coat where it don't matter. I don't care what anybody says, but let's uh, get to rocking. I'm gonna shoot the base, and then, like I said, I will time lapse probably the first coat of clear and maybe the last coat of clear, because then you normally can see differences. But if I just time lapse all this, you're gonna be watching just me go around in the car, and you're not really gonna see a difference. shot and painted looks beautiful all that gloss um, it's not perfect I gotta put cut and buff on it so this is Euro clear it's a high solids clear so it's a lot more um, thicker than what I'm normally spraying so basically if somebody is a painter and don't or if somebody's not a painter and doesn't understand um, if you can think of basically like the stuff I normally spray which is economical clear uh, it's more like water let's you know let's let's think of that and then a high solid zero, you know, like a glamour clear, clear is more like syrup that you would eat on like waffles or something. So it's just thicker um, if that puts it in perspective for you. It's got a little bit of trash in it. I do have a cross flow booth, meaning uh, which I actually taped all the doors up to try to eliminate as much trash as possible. There, I put a wet towel down on the outside of the doors. To, so there's nothing coming under doors and then I vacuum the carpet and everything beforehand. I use carpet because it actually helps keep dust from rolling up. Um, you know, and it locks it into fibers and you can vacuum it beforehand. So I vacuumed everything, blew everything down. 
but it's still pulling trash across it. And it comes out of every nook and cranny uh, around the lights. You know, you can see right here how it leaks in. So, I mean, you're gonna get some trash in a cross flow booth. The best, uh, the better booths, booths are definitely downdraft booths where they pull it down into the floor. Um, just is what it is. I normally don't do high end work, but I think it looks pretty good. Like I said, it's got some nibs in it and I do have a couple of runs because it is Euro clear and I'm not used to spraying Euro clear. So if you look carefully and I'll point them out, I got a sag right here, which is a start of a run. Um, and all of these will get cut and buffed right out. This is nothing, uh, nothing major. I mean, this is part of, well, running paint is not part of painting. It means you're a complete trash and you don't know how to paint and you don't know what you're doing normally. And I know I'm going to hear that. But anyway, I run EuroClear and High Solids Clear because I normally don't spray it. So, got a run right there or a sag, the start of one and a little one right there. All this stuff will cut and buff right out. It's not the end of the world. It's nothing to freak out about. Um, it does look really good though. It's got a nice uh, deep shine to it and after i cut and buff everything it'll be even better so the orange pill level is not too bad at all uh, it's, it's pretty minor uh, in my opinion but i'm sure that there's somebody that's going to comment on it that has been doing it 80 years that can do a whole lot better um and i'm not the best painter i don't even ever claim to be the best painter nor do i want to be the best painter um but yeah I think it turned out good. I'm happy with it besides the runs. Makes it more work on me. I got a nasty one over here. Let's find it. Let's see here. Oh yeah, right here. So if you look right here. Uh, there it is, old slug. So what happens with that, the reason why, like on the other side, the runs are in the same spot. And then I got a sag right here. I said, I'm not trying to hide nothing from y'all. This channel is to teach and go over stuff. This channel is not to make me look good. Yeah, right here. If you see the reflection in the light, there's a sag. That's the start of a run. Anyway, this channel is not to make me look good or to make me look like someone amazing because I, I don't care what anybody thinks about me and I don't care to look amazing. This is what I do. So yeah, a little bit of orange peel on this side. This panel, if you look at the reflection, you see how it looks like a texture of an orange, okay? And then if you look at this one, that this panel flowed out better, okay? See the reflection, how it's less like fuzzy looking? Um, so that's, that panel has a little bit more. Uh, but, and I don't remember why, because I hammered it on pretty thick. This has four coats of clear on it for anybody wondering, because I know somebody's gonna wonder. Um, and I put four on it because I know I'm gonna cut and buff. But I mean, the panels are pretty straight. If you look up there, you can see a little bit of the orange peel, okay? And we got the nasty slug there and slug there. So they're probably my two worst ones, but they're not bad. Like, I, mean, well, I mean, they're not the end of the world. You could take a flat block and cut that right out. So, but overall, I'm happy with it. I've got four coats on it. I've got plenty of paint to cut on top of. So this is the color. It's a real bright red. It's a factory Mustang color. Um, but overall, I mean, it looks good. You know, like all of our detail around all this looks good the uh, runs are in spots that are very easy to cut out there's no runs in spots that are complicated um, so nothing nothing stressful so basically what I mean by that because I'm sure I mean people just don't people don't know so if you had a run that went like this and went across the body line then it would be sometimes a pain in the butt because you don't want to cut through on the body line because your body line is a high spot so you would love for your runs to be in flat panels because you're actually going to use a, a hard block to cut these runs out. So this one goes like right to the body line, but not across the body line. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, it'll be easy to cut out with a hard block. Um, it's going to look good. I mean, you can see the cage, okay, how it was black. So that black cage on that red like that, dude, that's going to be, it's going to be nice. Um, the cow panel's laid out good for the most part. Um, the hood will hide all this, so the hood will go up or across that, you know, up to that, and it will have a uh, edge protector to touch that. Um, all the engine bay turned out really good. You know, I don't have no complaints about that. There'll be no wet sanding and buffing the engine bay, no wet sanding and buffing on the cow, no wet sanding and buffing on the roof. Randy's actually supposed to be adding something to the roof, so I'm not going to spool that for him. Uh, for him, 
uh, y'all can wait and see, but the roof, and the roof laid out like glass. I mean, it looks, it looks good. Normally I do better on flat surfaces. Yeah, most people do. It's got a little bit of uh, nibs of dust in it, but nothing major. So I, I don't, th I mean, if Randy wants to, you know, wants us to cut above the roof, we can, but what he's doing with the roof, I don't think we need to cut above the roof, but you know, he's the boss. So whatever he wants to do, I'm definitely cutting buffing the panels. And I would have done that probably anyway, just because I knew there was going to be some orange peel. So basically when you're spraying clear, um, you basically want to spray it so wet and so much on the panel that it's about to run, but it does not run. So there's like a split second of a stopping point. If you don't spray enough, then you get a lot of orange peel where you get a fuzzy look. But if you spray too much, you get a run. So it's like a split second of... Uh, the difference between too much and not enough. So I'd rather have too much where it runs and I can cut and buff it than not enough. Because if you don't have enough clear and you have a ton of orange peel or fuzzy, then it's an absolute nightmare to cut and buff out of. Uh, to cut and buff that out, it's way harder. Whereas this is just going to be cake. I mean, we'll probably take like 20, we'll probably take like 1,200, 1,500, something like that to the runs and then 2,500 to the flats and buff it and not, or 3,000 before we buff it, buff it, polish it. I mean, it'll be. It'll be beautiful. So all the tracks in here all look beautiful. We're inside the trunk. Um, I mean, everything come out good besides the runs. And all that is, it just makes more work on me. But like I said, I've never sprayed a high solids clear or a Euro clear that I have not ran. I told Randy before we did this job that I've ran every single uh, glamour clear or high solids clear I've ever sprayed in my life. So I get so used to spraying my normal economical clear, production clear, that this stuff's just thicker, it has more weight to it, and gravity just whoops my butt every single time. So I can spray my production clear pretty freaking good, where it looks uh, where it looks really good. You know, on my personal car, I don't have glamour clear. If you've seen any videos or pictures of mine, mine has a really good reflection. I think I've got five coats of production clear on my car, and it is cut and buffed, and it looks amazing. But um, a glamour clear is definitely beautiful. But there she is. So I'm not gonna bore y'all. That's the color. Uh, it is what is the date? Man, I lost track. Thursday. It's Thursday night. So I come back in to clean up some mess. I rolled out of here pretty fast earlier and uh, clean up some mess and get a video for y'all. So I'm gonna put this together. This should be dropping on Christmas day. I believe is what I'm gonna set this one to. Um, so I hope everybody's having a good Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Uh, thank everybody for watching and subscribing. And um, you can go ahead and comment below how many years of experience you have and how trash uh, my work is and how you can do a lot better. And I'll be make sure I can read it on Christmas day and everything and it'll definitely, it'll definitely uh, make my day and put us in the Christmas spirit. So Merry Christmas, you, your family. Thank y'all for watching and subscribing. Uh, we're going to move on after Christmas break. I'm going to move on to my car probably over the weekend and next week. So to hopefully get you some videos out of mine. And then we'll be back on this one after January the 3rd, doing the doors, the hood, the front end and all that. And I'll get you some nice runs on all that too. <laughs> I'm just joking. The, the smaller panels are actually, uh, a lot of times I don't I don't tend to run them as bad, and I lay them a lot of times horizontally. But I knew I was going to get some on this one. So anyway, like, comment, subscribe, share. Thank y'all.